All right, so if I start to move the grips of my slider, now my point moves around in space. Okay, so if I select the object, point X, Y, Z, um, it now turns green in my viewport, and we have a crosshair. That's how Grasshopper represents the object. All right, so let's also grab a panel from params input panel, and let's connect our the result of our point X, Y, Z into our panel. I'll make it humanist so you guys can see it a little bit better. And this is a single point. I'm just going to give this a label for the panel. And notice that we see X, Y, Z inside of curly brackets. One input for X and one input for Y gives us one point. All right, fair enough, right? We know how to create a single object. Right? You probably are also familiar with creating let's say, a row of points. So let's create a row of points. If I wanted to create a row of points, instead of defining just a single value for, let's say, x, which is the direction we're going to create a row in, what might we define as an input? Not one value, but does anyone know? A list of points, all right? So, or a more than one value for x. All right, so let's go to the sets sequence series object. And I'm going to uh, copy and paste these objects and slide them down. I'm going to turn the preview off of the first set. And now we just have this one. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create more than one point. Right? The series object asks for a start value, a step size, and a number of values in the series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my xval to go into n. That's going to be the step size. And c I need to define as the number of values in the series. Notice again the icon. This wants an integer. All right, so one advanced trick that we like to use is to double click in the canvas and say I want an integer between 1, because I know I need 1 point, uh, 1 less than, let's say, 5 less than 20. All right, so that will give me a slider that's automatically ranged between 1 and 20 that I can use to define my C input. Notice how it's also specified as integers because of my the values I typed in. So this is going to be my num x, number in the x. All right, so if I connect that, replace the input of x, now we have not one value, but many values. And not one point, but a list of points. All right, so now I have as many points as I define for num x. Right? As I move the slider, I get more points. Now we have a list of points. Okay, so this is our row. I'm going to take a minute to organize my file. Let you guys get caught up. I like to use the little line widgets to keep things nice and tidy in my file. All right, so now we've created a list of points and we have a row. All right, so a list is just a a simple data structure consisting of an ordered set of elements. All that means is that they have a specific order, right? First we have Ronnie in the list, then we have Gil, then we have Alvaro, then we have Ben. So that's the order of the list. They're organized. They're not just kind of um, hanging out in a hat that they will draw from randomly. All right, so if we notice the output of any object that, cr that creates or returns a list, we'll see that the panel represents the, both the objects, it shows us the objects that are here uh, in the list, as well as the index that is attached to that object. Right? So this is the order of the list. We have zero always as the first element in the list, or we count starting at zero. So in the example that I just said, it would be Ronnie, Gil, Alvaro, Ben. 
So we can always access those objects based on their index. And that's how we keep things organized in a list. OK. So we've created a row of points. And now we want to create a two-dimensional collection of points, right? We might call them a grid, but I'm not going to call it that quite yet. All right, so we have points going in the X row, uh, and we now want to essentially repeat that going through uh, in the Y direction. Really? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this in our Grasshopper file, and we'll do a copy-paste again and slide it down, turning the preview off here. This is also a great way to, um, to work with the objects that you're starting to learn about in Grasshopper uh, by developing uh, a little simple collection of objects that are connected. Make a duplicate of them and see what you can modify or how, if you make a modification, it changes what you get. And then keep going from there. So we'll incrementally build uh, these collections of objects and then um, uh, work again with making a modification to the one we just copied. All right, so to recap what we're do what we've done thus far and where we're going, we're creating a point first just by specifying an x and a y value, a row of points second by specifying multiple values for the x, and now we're going to do a grid of points where the points will exist in x in the x direction and y direction. All right, so if um, the nice thing about uh, working with Grasshopper is that we have these objects, they're explicit, and if we do something once, we can replicate that logic by copying and pasting. Copy, pasting, and doing the same set of, of actions to a new uh, set of objects. All right, so before we get, go any further, I'm just going to go ahead and group these objects so we can kind of visually see that they're um, organized in these kind of incremental steps. Let's just select and control G or edit group selection. All right, so here's our single point. Here's our list of points. And now managing my previews, I'm going to go on to what we're going to call a grid of points. All right, so if we use the series object to create multiple numerical values that created a list, for the X, we can do the exact same thing for the Y. So I'm going to get another series object from sets, sequence, series. Drop this in. And now we're going to have uh, the Y value specify this N input. And we need another slider for C that is the uh, numerical uh, an integer value that will specify the number of points in the Y so I'm going to copy and paste this, rename it, numy, and now hook up C. Okay, so now I have another list of uh, values coming out of the C, uh, series object. So let's go ahead and connect this into Y. If our preview is on, something funny may have happened. What do we notice? We have a list of values defining x coordinates, a list of y's of values defining y coordinates, but we're not getting a grid of points. We're getting a diagonal line and sometimes a line segment carrying forth from the end of that. All right, so if you have this, you haven't done anything wrong. You're correct. It's just that we have to be a little bit more specific. Because if we say we want eight values in the x direction and 12 values, in my case, in the y direction, how does Grasshopper know how to match those values up, right? Well, the way it by default assumes you want to do that is say, I only want max, 12 is more than eight, so I'm going to give you 12 points and match that data, these lists coming in as best I can. So what happens when we have different length lists going into an input is called data matching. And how we assign the particular rule for data, how Grasshopper is going to data match can be done in three ways. And these are 
data matching algorithms. How do you want to match the differently sized lists? All right, so if we have a collection of points that we'll call stream A, and another collection of points called stream B, if we want to relate those points, there's three rules for how you can relate those points that have, in the case of stream A, there's three points. In the case of stream B, there's five points. Okay, so um, the first rule is shortest list, right? And that will just do the action that we're asking for one by one until one of the streams runs dry, the shortest one, right? So we'll be going... Uh, we'll be making three lines in this case uh, through the shortest list data matching algorithm. Um, the next and the default rule for Grasshopper is called the longest list. So if in this case we have three points and five points and two streams, we're going to end up with five lines, but the last three are all going to share the same input. Okay, and then the last one is cross-reference. And that's the third type and the kind of uh, one that you want to use the, in the least, uh, least frequently. Um, and that means just that we're going to make all possible combinations between the inputs. All right? So uh, there's a question that said, what is cross-reference? And this, is, this example here is going to show us exactly what happens if we have cross-reference. Right now, we have... In my case, if you set your sliders to 8 and 12, you'll have the same a set of uh, num uh, same amount of values in each of the outputs here, which is 8 and 12. By default, we have 8 connections creating points in the diagonal line, and then the last set of points are going to share the x value, which is in my case 15.288. Okay, so cross-reference. What exactly does that mean? What do you think that we would get if we did a cross-reference with our XYZ create point object? So go ahead and um, ping a message, an answer in the message window. Um, saying what do you think is going to happen when we cross-reference these two values. So some of, I think a few of you said that we're going to get a grid, right? And yes, we are going to get points organized in X and, X and Y. So the way we're going to uh, implement the cross-reference rule is to go to sets list. And down at the bottom, there's three um, icons here that define the data matching rules. So we'll do cross-reference. And if we hook up series A and series B, and then replace X and Y, we now get our grid of points. All right, so now we have control over the extents, how far they go, like how many there are in the Y, how many there are in the X, and the spacing in X, and the spacing in Y. All right, now here's the, here's the key thing. What do we notice about the output? And this is going to be um, the next challenge question that you should add into the message window. Out of XYZ here, when we use cross-reference, what do we get? Is it a single item? Is it a list? Or is it something else? It's still a list, right? Still a list, right? So the cross-reference will achieve a grid of points. However, they're just still understood with one little important thing attached to them, just one index value, right? So if you look at the panel and you scroll down, right, now we have, in my case, 0 to 89. So I have 90 points. But they're just understood as one collection of points. Now, they have an index value attached to them, but that's about it. The way for us to, uh, to double-check this would be to go to vector, point, point list, 
and let's connect the X, Y, Z points into P. I'll turn the preview off on the X, Y, Z by right clicking. If I go to top view, this might be a little bit easier to see. How are my points organized? Well, I had nine specified for the number of values I wanted in the X. So I'm going to get 0 to 8. Then my next point actually back over here, 9 to 17, again and again and again. So I have one big long list of points, and it's essentially wrapping through the whole collection of points into creating one big long list.